Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Behind the Edit. This is the show where I walk you through my editing process, taking this photo to this photo. The amazing model in this photo is the Ambaluna, I think that's how you say her Instagram name, I'm, I'm not totally sure there, but her name is Amber, she's amazing, we've collabed a few times, we did a Christmas photo together, check out my Instagram, at Miles of Color, please leave a follow there, and check the photos there of Amber, as well as uh, her Instagram, follow her there. For my frequent viewers, I'm sorry, I haven't been uploading for like two weeks, but uh, I wanna say thank you for 20K views on that Sarah Adams video, like what the heck, guys? That is, that is insane, 20,000 views and 5,000 subscribers as well. That is, I'm kind of mind blown, honestly. I've always wanted to be a YouTuber since I was like a little kid. And uh, by little kid, I mean 16. And it's it's happening now, it's so cool. So I don't, I don't know, I just wanna say thank you. 2018 has been crazy, a year of growth. 80,000 followers on Instagram, hello. I went into this year with like 25,000 followers. I am shook. Lil Shook is my SoundCloud rapper name now. Let's just call me Lil Shook. And um, screw it, you know, let's just hop into Photoshop. We're gonna walk through this photo. It's one of my all time favorites. I think it's like my most liked photo, which is kind of crazy. Not that likes matter. Let's just hop in, let's just check it out. Let's just. I haven't looked at this file in like a few weeks, but uh, I'm gonna try my best to explain it to you. So let's just hop into, yes. Okay, so here is the image. This is everything that I got so far in Lightroom. Basically, I changed my greens a little bit. I bumped the exposure of the before image just a bit, but I didn't do anything too crazy. If you guys wanna check out, I believe it was the Sarah Adams photo that I posted, uh, the, the video that I did as well. I walked you through basically my Lightroom editing process kind of, which is, it's very minimal. I just boost up my shadows drop my highlights a little bit and just kind of get a nice flat image and get my colors kind of where I want them to start going, but I don't do anything too crazy. So you're not missing out a ton. Anyways, first step always, can you guys guess it? Can you guess? It's skin. Skin editing, of course, always. Boom, here's my skin touch up. It looks pretty wild on my monitor here, but I think I think it's fine. Um, I'm gonna walk you through kind of what I did here so you can kind of see the, the changes. Let's zoom in just a little bit. So this is like a really good image to work with because she has amazing skin. So I just wanted to basically amplify amazing features and then just kind of take out, you know, like a little bit of eye bags and whatnot, but nothing too crazy. Amber has an amazing look. So here, this is our skin retouch. This is nothing that I did um, with dodging and burning yet, but this is the before and after of the skin retouch. Zoom into the sides here. You can see I took out some hair as well. I'm doing this all with frequency separation. Right now, if you're on Instagram in the photography community, you know that local dodging and burning is the new wave. I have not hopped on that wave yet. I'm still surfing the old one, and I think it's a uh, it's not a bad wave to be on. Don't feel bad about yourself if you're still doing frequency separation because I am too. So let's be on this boat together and just ride it out. Okay, and then dodging and burning. I add a extra uh, I add an extra texture layer here, which is kind of interesting. So my opacity here is around 50% on my texture layer. And let me just, boom. Okay, so I actually dodge and burn using dodging and burning tools. So here's the dodge and burn here on the side, which is the letter O if you wanna bring the hotkey up. And I just, here, I'll do the dodging right now. It just will dodge like this area on the skin, but it doesn't dodge the actual image which is really cool. Obviously, that's a terrible example because I'm not gonna use that one, but yeah. So, I'm loving this new technique of dodging and burning that I'm doing. It has changed my touch-up game. People have just been all about it and it's it's been great. However, I'm gonna move on eventually to local dodging and burning, but I'm just stubborn, okay? I'm still having fun with frequency separation. Next layer, let's see what we did here. Ah, okay, I did a little bit of liquefying. Liquefying is super controversial, kind of. Why do I mean kind of? Like, it is controversial. So it, I changed the features of the model slightly. I made her eyes a little bigger and I made her hair a little bigger to give us that kind of like fairy tale esque look. And maybe you liked it before, that's totally fine. This just looked good to my eye. I want to make her look just like a little bit more storybook. I guess is the best way I can say it. What I do here, I think I blurred the background. Yeah, so I wanted to isolate Amber just a little bit more. So I made a whole other layer here by doing Command or Control J and I made a whole other layer and then I made it a smart layer by going up to filter and then converting to smart filters. And then I used the filter called Gaussian Blur, which is in this blur section, Gaussian Blur. And let's see how much I blurred it. 
almost 10, almost 10 pixels. And yeah, so this is what this is what it did. If you can just look up here on this, this top left side, I just blended the leaves just a little bit. And you'll see why um, on this next step, which I labeled plants. So for the plant layer, I basically wanted to fill in the sides of amber a little bit, the left side, because it felt a little too open to me and it was kind of distracting me from looking at her, who is obviously the main focus, like she's center frame, right? So we want her to be our distraction. We don't need any side distractions over here, all right? No side hose on screen. Something was supposed to happen. Oh, okay, here we go. Boom. So I just added a little bit of foreground here and I think that just kind of leads you, just leads you straight to Amber instead of not being there, right? Like it's just this nice little addition. Nothing too crazy. I didn't go too wild, but yeah. Okay, and then the next step, I actually got some pictures of like a ton of roses off of unsplash.com, an amazing website where you get free stock photos and you can just, you know, credit the photographer who took them, of course, but you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to sign up. You can just download Download photos and you're off on your merry way and I made samples of red roses and then I turned this area into a rose bush let me show you scroll down here boom boom Look at that, see? So I basically used this one tiny sample um, that I cut out, which I would show you guys which one I used, but I actually deleted the file, so I don't even know which photo I used. I'm very sorry, but it's a, it's a pretty basic thing to do. You guys can do it, I believe in you. And these are the roses that I added in, just to give us like a nice like floral vibe, you know? Like we're obviously in the plants in nature and she's holding a rose, and I was like, what? If, it would be kind of powerful if we had more roses around. So it looks like she's like either embracing a plant that's there or she like, picked one for herself and she's she's just enjoying nature and she's out there picking roses. I don't know what the story is, but that's as far as I got. And then I have this clipping layer here where I desaturated the roses just a little bit to let the center rose that she's holding stand out. Once again, a really big thing for editing portraits that are closer up is you want to remove distractions to enhance our subject. So my subject is Amber and the rose and her face. And by desaturating, I think I'm pulling away a little bit of the the brightness, the, the vibrance of these roses here. Okay, next layer is dust. This one's super fun. It adds like this fairy tale vibe to the photo, maybe. Oh yeah, here we go. Boom, so hella speckles, right? There's a ton. Um, it is blended using this screen option, but here's the normal. Here's a nice little cut out of her face I did using a layer mask, but I'm going to blend with screen. And because there's so many, just this abundant amount of dust specs, like it was too much. I used my levels and I just kind of, I messed with it a little bit until I got just a little bit less dust specs, okay? It's really cool to see what you can do by making a, um, by making a clipping mask with the layer because you can do all these adjustments to just one singular layer by doing a clipping mask and I love it. It really just helps with control. That's why I love Photoshop so much. So there's the dust, there we go. There's the roses. I'm thinking it's looking pretty dope so far, but let's keep going into our exposure and coloring, which is a train ride. Holy crap, let me show you what's going on. Okay, so how many how many layers? Like 19,000? Um, let's start here at selective color. So the first objective was to make my leaves very freaking blue, which we did, but now we have some weird skin going on, some Oompa Loompa skin. It's just a little strange. We have some un not very pleasing yellows and greens back here, but we, ha we achieved our blue leaves that we want later. Boom, I pumped up my vibrance a little bit because I know that Vibrance is going to be something that we want. Not a ton, just 21. And I'll show you the settings that I use for my my leaves as well. Here's what I did to the skin with using the reds. Check that out. Um, and I also worked backwards here. So I do want you to kind of understand that I was not aiming for her skin to be all orange. As we move up this layer here, up this group, you're going to see the tones unfold. So don't get too weirded out right now. I know it looks kind of strange. Let's go over to our cyans. So a lot of changes here happen with the cyans. I basically made them blue instead of like that tealy kind of green. I made the blues more rich as well. And let's see what we did to greens and yellows. Anything? Yeah, a little bit of switches to the greens and to the yellows. So I was basically prepping it for the changes upcoming. Here is our curves layer, which is just a slight boost in our exposure just to make the image a bit more punchy. And I also added a little bit of exposure as well. Just 0.14, nothing too crazy. Boom, a little bit of gamma correction to make the image more punchy. 
probably do nothing with color balance. Guys, if you watch these videos, if you watch them all, I have color balance there every single time and I never use it. I need to stop doing this. I don't know why it's there. It's like a just in case kind of, you know, comfort thing. Okay, next, I use um, a lookup table, which I'm always using to strip, all right? It's built into Photoshop, it's called to strip. It's in your color lookup table adjustment layer, which you find in your adjustments. It's right here. It's all these little like squares on this rectangular grid. And um, yeah, it's gonna start Start us off uh, with our tones, which I have blending on the color setting and then at opacity 85. And the next, what do we have here? Do we have another one? Looks like I have another one. I, I'm kind of, we're gonna find out what I did together, guys, because I'm kind of confused that I put this other one here. I have a hue and saturation layer, which, okay, okay. So it looks like I made an adjustment to my science. Yeah, okay, so I found the leaves to be very distracting because they're so bright. So I actually lowered my lightness to negative 13 and the saturation to negative 19 here. And that just brought them down a little bit to get the focus back on Amazing Amber. Right here, I actually made the shirt white again, all right? This is America, make shirts white again, ugh. Um, because it was like blue teal, not the vibe, honestly, like she wasn't wearing a blue teal shirt. So I made it white. Boom, oof, I love the selective layer. So I wanted to get back to that deep blue that we had, like a few layers down here that we started out our selective coloring with. I really did enjoy the kind of like green blue or green um, pink look that we had going on, but it was just a little bit too much, too heavy on my eyes, too stylized. So I was like, all right, let's just make it blue. And that just felt better to my eyes because working with blue and red, like two primary colors and they work very well together. It's kind of like doing teal and orange. They contrast each other very, very well. And then right here, I just darkened up this right here because once again, guys, the whole point of this photo and the edit was to amplify Amber. I'm not trying to take away from her. And I felt like if we darken up the side over here, it just brings attention back to Amber. And then we have one more adjustment, which gave Amber a orange skin tone instead of this pink. Just using a nice little saturation layer. I think we did reds and I just brought it. I just boosted the hue a little bit to the seven. So boom, boom. Here is our exposure coloring before and after. Kind of crazy, honestly. And let's do the before and after down here as well. Boom and boom. Honestly, this is one of my favorite photos that I've done this year, so I hope you guys like it as well. I hope that walkthrough was like kind of useful. I know it was kind of a mess, but that was such like a an all over the place edit, trying to get the colors correct and everything. I want you guys to take away one thing from this video, which is even people who have been doing this for a few years, we're still kind of a mess when it comes to our Photoshop files. So don't be discouraged as a new photographer. I know this isn't a very like step-by-step -step, watch me edit kind of thing, but if anything, you can take away something from my process. You can take away something of how I'm changing colors. Take screenshots, slow the video down, and just try to use it for yourself. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please follow Amber, please follow me, and look out for the next episode of Behind the Edit coming to you next week. Hopefully. Go tell your friends about it. About it. Go tell your friends about it. About it. Go tell them what you know, what you see, how I...